Hi, uh, my name is Vignesh Manohar and uh, I am currently pursuing my PhD in electrical engineering with concentration in the field of electromagnetics and antenna design from the University of California, Los Angeles. And my advisor is Professor Yaya Ahmed Sami. And um, hopefully if things work out, I'll be graduating within the next year. In terms of university selection, I had applied to about nine colleges, I think. Uh, and out of which my major admits was UCLA, Georgia Tech. Uh, those two were the, the two main admits that I got amongst other admits. And my choice of UCLA was, of course, California is, has awesome weather. So that was one big factor. But apart from that, it's also the fact that Professor Yaya Ahmed Sami, who is uh, a distinguished professor here at UCLA, um, is one of the most well-known figures in the field of electromagnetics and antenna engineering. And so um, since I was interested in this field, it just made my decision a little more easier once I got an admit from UCLA. So the, the main driving point behind choosing UCLA was basically uh, California as a state because of its weather conditions um, you know, the, the, and the great opportunities for doing various things around California. And also the fact that you know, my advisor is so well known in the field. And also UCLA has a very good program and it's very reputed in the field of RF, electromagnetics and microwaves. So those were the main reasons for me to choose uh, UCLA. The, the choice of PhD has to be, um, so, 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 so the choice for PhD actually for me happened gradually. I came in here as a master's student to start with in 2014. And then I kept on working with my advisor and they took a lot of courses around UCLA and all that. And uh, soon I realized that I enjoy working in this field. I enjoy working with my advisor. And I decided to pursue my PhD under the same advisor. And so it was a gradual process for me. I didn't come here as a PhD student. So then the, so you know, carrying ahead from there, the question becomes, you know, what prompts you to do masters or PhD after a bachelor's? And, a lot of it has to do with my interest, which was in the field of electromagnetics, antennas, and RF, which is a short for radio frequency circuits and stuff like that. Uh, and these are those fields where if you just do a bachelor's, it, it doesn't suffice you know, to really get a good research position anywhere in the world in general. These are fields where a PhD is really required in order to do some fruitful research because it takes that long to really get a good grip of that subject. And also the fact that um, my, my long-term aim is to get into academia. And um, so getting into academia without having a PhD is, is, uh, is not a good decision. And so these were the kind of factors that prompted me to you know, pursue PhD and master's. So uh, managing finances uh, during my PhD and MS. So, you know, the life here as a PhD, as, a, as an MS or a PhD student, um, it's a very professor dependent culture here. So, for me, what happened was it was just my luck and uh, my relationship with my advisor that things worked out when I came here. And so we got projects from NASA and it was through those projects that I got funded. So here in UCLA, we call it graduate, uh, we call it graduate student researcher, GSR. And other universities tend to call it RA, research assistantship. And that funded me through and through. So for most part of my master's and PhD, I was funded through that project. And once that project finished, um, you, know, you, you, get op you get opportunities to do teaching assistantship um, where you, you assist, the, assist 
different lecturers to conduct their courses. And so you, at UCLA, you get the opportunity to hold regular discussion sessions where you actually physically go and teach undergrad people and um, kind of help them to navigate through the course and summarize the content that was presented in the lectures um, every week. And so that you know, keeps me funded even after the project finished. So these two are the main kind of, you know, main funding opportunities that students get within the department. Um, there are also other opportunities such as internship for people who might be um, interested in working on the industry and stuff like that. They can do internships every summer. And so that's another source of funding. Or the other um, option for funding is also on-campus jobs, which could be uh, which could be anywhere from working in the cafeteria to you know, doing other you know, kinds of works around campus. They don't pay you too much, but it's, it's kind of pocket money. They might pay you 200 to 300 dollars per month, um, give and take, depending on what kind of work you're involved in. And so. Uh, depending on you know, what your situation is, these are the kind of options that people usually exercise while looking at funding options. Okay, so um, as far as visa is concerned, visa is not a very critical aspect uh, per se. It's the I-20 that's really critical for students. And to stay in the U.S., your I-20 has to be valid. So you can be in the U.S. with an expired visa, but you cannot be in the U.S. with an expired I-20. And so what happened in my case was they gave me um, an I-20 for my master's, which expired in two years after I came here. So I came here in 2014. Uh, my I-20 master's expired in 2016. And after that, um, I just contacted my department and my university and they just gave me a new I-20 for my PhD. So that I-20 goes for five years. So 2016 to 2021 is that I-20. And so as long as that I-20 is valid, I can, I can stay here. As far as visa is concerned, um, when you get your F1 visa by default, they give it for five years. And so you're good for five years, regardless of whether you come here for master's or PhD in terms of you know, your visa uh, validity. And once you exceed that those five years, um, if you want to keep continuing as a student in the, in the university, what usually has to be done is you have to go back to India and get it renewed and you come back. The great thing about US and you know, universities such as UCLA is that it gives you ample of opportunities to do various kinds of things. So you don't have to be rooted only to you know, the technical aspect of your, uh, of your of your research and stuff like that. You can actually diversify a lot um, as long as uh, you manage your time well. And so for me, one of my, my great passions in life is classical music. So I've trained as a Hindustani classical uh, vocalist for the past 13 to 14 years now. And so it was very important for me that I keep it alive even after I come here to the US. And so, that was another big factor for me to come here because UCLA has a very vibrant uh, music culture. In fact, it actually has one of the best uh, Indian classical music departments where tabla and sitar both are taught as full-fledged courses. And so uh, that really helped me to you know, keep my music alive. And, I, I collaborate a lot with the two professors of tabla and sitar there, and we get together to practice many a times. We perform together many a times. And so um, along with my engineering and my research and my PhD life, uh, I also get ample opportunities to keep my classical music and to keep that, that side of my passion alive and, and going. And I, I still continue to improve, I continue to practice, I continue to perform even, even in the US. My, my aim is to hopefully get into some good research organization. Um, 
something something in the lines of industry research uh, something along the lines of a research based organization not necessarily academia immediately but a research based organization and spend some time there um, looking at how the industry works and get some experience there and finally you know come back to academia that's my long term aim but i want to spend some time in the industry before i come back there. so one thing that probably should be kept in mind when people come here for their ms or phd is the fact that us by and large um is a very very work oriented culture and so it's very unlike what people see in movies or or all the kind of misconceptions that they have about staying in the us it's not all fun and it's not all you know joy and whatever have you um there is a lot of stress and work and um things can get really hectic there will be a lot of nights where you won't sleep there will be there will be lot of times where you know um more often than not you will get stressed out and so you require a certain level of of passion you know in the field that you are working in otherwise sustaining here can become very difficult if you don't enjoy the course if you don't enjoy your your if you don't enjoy your technical subject to the extent that you know you can survive this journey it's going to get really difficult and but if you do enjoy and if you are passionate the opportunities that this country provides for you is amazing you will get the best of the best faculty you will get the best of the best facilities um you can pursue you know like i said you can you can pursue your your other hobbies or passions on the side uh there's so many things that happen you know everything from food to music to films to uh you know to clothes whatever have you it's 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 an amalgamation of so many cultures across the world and so it's it's one of those experiences where you'll get to work with you'll get to see and experience so many cultures and also it gives an opportunity to interact and work with students coming from different countries for example a lot of my friends are from china and so you get to work with you know people from china japan korea you know, across the world uh, europe you can name it and you know you will actually interact with you know, students coming from all these various diverse cultural backgrounds and so apart from you know working with them and understanding and appreciating you know their work you also get to talk to them and understand their culture and their uh their um, perspective of life and i think that allows you to grow a lot you know as a human being apart from you know growing as a as an engineer so i think it's a it's a very fulfilling experience to to come here and you know spend some good time um doing your your phd or masters so